quite impressed. I'm very honored. <laughs> very, honored. <laughs> very honored. We're so excited. Thank you so much. So for 13 years, this place has sprung out of the ground in separate locations, causing me to wander far and wide to find where the party takes place so that I may see it with my eyes. I may not partake. It is not my way. It is my job to give to you, for you have given to me. I ask you for not a dime. You will go to places amongst the city where they will give you a revival and ask you for whatever you can spare. I ask for nothing but your kind attention. If you feel the need to give me a drop of water, I will drink that day. If you feel the need of a scrap of food, then I will eat that day. If the good Lord, the one above, Adam on high, decides that my corpse will nourish this good earth, then that is what I will do, for that is my calling. Now I have called to you today because today is the end of another one of our wonderful festivals. It has been a momentous one. We have seen stars rise, we have seen stars fall. A good man, a personal friend, walking away. <laughs> I'm an emotional man, southern men are. Uh, <laughs> and we get to say goodbye to him, but not actually. He never leaves because his mark is all around us in, in, in welds and in hammer marks and in blast marks and fire. He's put such a, such a monument together that in no way, the funny part about that is most monuments are selfish things. They're selfish. They put them up so they may honor themselves. This man built a monument to honor all of us, to give us, we, the collective whole, something to look at and hold as our own. And we add to it. And does it grow? Have I not with my own good eyes seen every person that stands before me grow into something new and something beautiful? And it continues on, no matter who's there with us. But we carry them, we carry them forever. We have a voice, each one of us does, and that voice is a loud, powerful thing, and it's our choice how we use it, and as a unified whole, that voice can shake the heavens, and it must be heard. For many years ago, some of you were still babes in a pram. There were great men, well they called themselves such, and their voices were great. Not for the weight of their love, not for the weight of their souls, but for the numbers in their pockets. And they said things, and they did things. And though they lined their pockets with gold, they brought upon us something we would never, ever get over. Look about you at the smoldering ruin of the world that they created and then destroyed with their own hubris. They released us from that yoke. They killed themselves. Who killed the world? I can show them to you. Now here's the saddest part of all. They never leave. Their faces change. They still talk in honeyed words. They still offer you things that you do not need. They give you fear. They give you pain. They give you division. And they try to keep you confused. When you see a man, or anyone for that matter, preaching division in things, you see a person with goals far beyond what you see on the surface. I will look at you this way. Because I can't see you. <laughs> How do we recognize these people when they arise? First, they will look to the past. They will look for former glory. Former glories are former. They were beautiful once. They're never beautiful in that way again. That's why we enjoy them. That's why we revere them because that glory is now gone. Does that mean there aren't glories to be had? No. I mean, glory can become from any one of us. All we do is stand up and that voice, the one that lives in here, the one that comes from your heart and from your soul, we unite that voice and we say, this is where we want to go. You wanna see someone who's telling you where he needs to be? You wanna see someone who's got your will your needs in their heart, they look to the future. They don't bother looking to the past for any more than a reference going, don't want to be there. <laughs> they want to be there. They see it with their own eyes. 
And all of us sitting here in this dirt, it's hard to look up. We're down at the bottom. But I ask you this, is there anywhere else to look? Can't look much lower. Might as well tip your head to the stars. Does that mean your ambition's gonna get bigger than your, than your means? It just means you'll get creative. And you'll find ways to be more. Find ways to rise up. And find ways to hold each other up. Because that's what we're here to do. And I say these things to you so that you take a piece of that wall, put it here, keep it in you all year. When you see a brother or sister, you see one of your fellow wasters, you reach out and you give them that hearty cultural bird. I mean, everyone in the world thinks you're crazy or, or, or an aggressive ass. But the people that know, that warms them in a way that you can't even express to someone. You say, well, they're from, a, they're from a thing I do. They can't even begin to cover it. <laughs> That's like spitting in the ground and calling it an ocean. You can't even, you can't even come up with a way to describe what this is. You go, if someone has an actual interest, you go, you have to see this. Yes. You are not going to believe it. Your world will change. I have had the grand and great privilege to drag people into this and change their lives forever. It is a gift. It is something I cherish, something I hold so true, so dear. And I believe this place and the things this place produces and the things this place makes for us are as essential to the human condition as air and water. Without these things, we are not us. Yes. Without these things, we cannot be who we want to be. And there's again that voice lives in your heart, lives in your soul, comes out of your throat, comes out of your mouth, comes out of your hand when you're right. That voice, not only does that voice unite you with a group and make you stronger, larger, more powerful than you ever could be on your own, it also gives you something else, something else that they don't tell you, mostly because they don't want to admit it to themselves. That gives you immortality. Words on a page will last a century longer. Some of them, thousands and thousands of years. People look for words on a page. Words are powerful. Learning to make those words, scratch them into words, scratch them onto walls, scratch them into rocks. They'll be there forever, just like us. No matter how low we go here, again, looking up's the only way. And we, by making our mark, will live forever. Now, when we go, when we die, I get into the metaphysical part of it. We go somewhere else. We know that energy, this, never vanishes. So take heart. You're pretty now. It won't be so pretty then, but it never leaves. You leave and you join the great by and by. Even that thing inside your brain that makes the buzz noise, the thing that keeps the heart moving, all of that, all of that energy, all of that that is you, never leaves. To be true, that's what I worship. Adam is a, is, a, is a symbol. Adam is a, a symbol of power. People have always gravitated towards great symbols of power. Now, with a single button push and a few words, someone took everything from everybody in one fell swoop. That's power. You want to know what I saw after that? I saw groups of people that should have just laid down and died come forward and make something new scratch themselves out of the dirt. All of us have power. All of us have soul. And again, I'll say it again, I'll say it the entire time, all of us have a voice. And that voice, it needs to be heard. Every single one of us. How many of the people sitting here before me today have never seen this before? Put your hand not low, son, you can raise it high. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. You're home. I cannot bring a river to you. 
But I can bring the water of the river to you. This is my peace. This is water they give me. I want to give this water to you. Anyone that wishes to partake of the water, place their hands in front of them, and I will give what I can until I can give no more. Does this please the congregation? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I will start at the furthest. Make a cup in your hand. Touch it to your brow. And let that be a mark upon you that you are accepted. <laughs> oh, you're out. Let's go down, come on, come on, let's go down, down in the river to the pray. As I down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way to do shit. The good Lord show me. Oh, Easter's, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on, Easter's, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I was down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way of you shall the hands Lord, show me Oh, Easter's, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on, Let's go down, come on down, you want to go down. Come on, wasters, let's go down, down in the river to We have a year to wait until we may gather again. And I will bring more water, I will bring more words, and you will bring more deeds. You will bring more color, more noise, more creativity. We will bring the things that bring us back and we will keep returning because of you. Because of the things that you do. Because of your voice. And it is your voice that will give us a world that is worth fighting to keep. Adam, bless all of you. Thank you so much for coming and listening today. I am touched. <laughs> Praise, Praise Adam. Adam. Praise Adam. Praise Adam. For the good book today. Thank you. It all came from me. Uh, and you came for us. <laughs> I do everything I can. Altruism is the goal. I give not for me, I give to you and let others do for me. That is how a good person betrays themselves. I don't need to brag. I don't need to boast. Those that do have little to speak of. When another person stands in front of you and says, you will not speak ill of this man or woman because of these things. There you go. You've built something. This person now has recognition. They have their own story and it is guarded by those that love and keep them. People of all, creed, race, gender, everything, all people strive for this. The fun thing about this is, is that Wastelanders have it built in. You come here, we touch the very deepest part of your soul that you didn't even know existed. And now you'll give it to others. I hope it's infectious. 
like a disease. <laughs> a disease of beauty and kindness. A disease of respect. It needs to spread viral. Just like the horrible things, why not have something that's wonderful and viral? <laughs> I release you all back into the world. You all have toils to do, and I have roads to walk. Adam bless you. Adam bless you. Bless you. Oh, good sir. Praise Adam. Praise Adam. Praise Adam. <laughs> oh, so <I> hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry.